Oompa Loompa Doompa Dee Doo, I got another story for you. What's going on, all you wild chocolate factory enthusiasts out there? Your two favorite Timothy Chalamet enthusiasts are back tonight, and we're here to review the brand new Paul King film. Of course, the prequel film to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, the old classic starring Gene Wilder. This time we get the prequel story about how Willy, you know, first came on the scene and how he got this brilliant idea for a chocolate factory. This one's starring Timothy Chalamet as Willy Wonka. Wonka? Okay, now we're going to turn the rest of the review into a musical. Oh. <laughs> it's a prequel film origin story of sorts for uh, Willy Wonka making his way to Paris, dreams of opening a chocolate shop. Of course, the town is ran by greedy chocolatiers, like a cartel. And, uh, you know, he's <laughs> not in his luck. He's young. He's poor. He's you know, has this beautiful recipe from his mom's chocolate that he's trying to sling. And, you know, it's the best chocolate ever. And they can't you know, compete with this top-notch, top-tier chocolate that Mr. Wonka has here. And that's really the setup of the film. And it's led by Timothy Chalamet. We first see him coming onto the screen. He's coming off, coming in on a steamboat. And that's when he realized that this film is a musical right off the bat. He sings a number coming in. That sort of sets the stage for what you can expect with the rest of the film. There's a lot of musical numbers in this. Wasn't expecting it. Of course, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory had musical numbers. This one was old Timothy Chalamet belting out some new songs that we hadn't heard before. They throw in, of course, the songs that you know, uh, a couple of them throughout the movie. Um, but this one very much is an origin story. There's not a lot of uh, other characters that you know. It's an all new list of characters and cast. Um, I noticed that we had uh, Keegan-Michael Key uh, playing a character here. There's a lot of uh, famous faces throughout. Mr. Bean, Rowan Atkinson's in there as like the priest or the uh, basically like the Pope kind of there. I don't know exactly what he was, but it's this town that's uh, looked a lot like uh, Paris. And it was a mix of like Germany, Paris, like Prague, like buildings looked uh, very different. Like they were taken from different places and put in this same area where they're supposed to be here. And, you know, when Willie steps on the scene, the chocolatiers there that are already set up right away, they don't like them. They're working against them. They can't stand them and they'll do anything to stop them. And, uh, you know, the other character that we focus on here, um, the character of Noodle uh, forms a friendship with Willie and really serves as the backdrop for this movie. She is kind of like an orphan. And her and Willie form a bond. She's trying to help him set up this candy shop and creation out there. And these people are all working against him to make his, you know, to dash his dream and to get him out of there. They just don't like old Willie. In this film is, you know, them trying to beat down Willie, you know, Willie Wonka here, Timothy Chalamet, and in between musical numbers, you know, the bad guys, the cartel, you know, they were pretty, pretty good, pretty convincing, these roles. I thought they were very you know, find a cartoonish, and that was the whole point. But, you know, they, they really let Willie shine in this movie, you know, Wonka. Uh, Timothy singing his heart out, you know, he has a pretty decent voice, but I I, just, I guess I wasn't expecting a full-on musical for this movie. And I'm not a musical fan, so I was kind of out of it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you're kind of wanting to know, like, how much this is going to resemble the original film. And, you know, are we going to see Oompa Loompas and up on the scene, finally, at like 45 minutes in, we see Hugh Grant as the only Oompa Loompa that we see in the film, completely ridiculous a CGI. You know, it's of course, it's it's his full face in this tiny body. Um, and it's funny. You know, that was my favorite part of the film, actually, just for how comical it was and over the top, his scenes and his musical numbers. It was my favorite part of the movie, you know, just because of how laughable and how funny it was seeing him and uh, watching him and how he's able to help Willie in this and how they work together. My favorite part of the film, honestly, like you, yeah, I'm not a big musical fan. A lot of the numbers, you know, I'm like, okay, well, I, I went with it. It was fine. 
but the whole time you're you're looking at Timothy Chalamet and just thinking like this should have been Jeremy Allen White here. He could have been Gene Wilder's. You know, he looks like he's related to Gene Wilder. It would have been a perfect a perfect cast there. But this is what it is. They're you know trying to build out the franchise with this prequel, and overall, it's a fun. I'm, it's fine you know it just for me it just didn't add anything and hearing a lot of the buzz i was expecting more here i thought maybe we're gonna get something great and having paul king the director of paddington those movies were you know very good and surprisingly good so there was some hope for this but unfortunately i wasn't really thrilled with how it turned out it was just kind of like okay it was fine and there were some fun moments with hugh grant timothy chalamet's got a great voice and is a good actor and everything and just you know, I, I wasn't, I wasn't over the moon about it. Yeah, I was so excited for Hugh Grant. We love that grumpy Englishman. You know, he's always pissed off. You know, his live interviews and just how much he hates his job. <laughs> and I can imagine all the pain he was going through filming this because you know he did not want to be in this movie. I don't even know. Maybe he needed the money, paycheck, whatever. But yeah, he was the best part. I I, I love what he did with it. He was hilarious. He was like a foot tall, little tiny. <laughs> <laughs> Oompa Loompa, the OG, the original Oompa Loompa, and then they kind of show a part with the island full of them. And uh, but yeah, he was like the original, and his you know Wonka's friend and guiding him and helping him mm-hmm. in sticky and thick situations that he gets himself into. So yeah, he really was my favorite part of the movie, and you know made the movie enjoyable. The parts he was in that too. Uh, at the end, when they sh- they uh, get into the actual factory being made and showing. Hugh Grant as Oompa Loompa, you re- it really relies heavily on CG. There was no practical effects. And that's what made the original Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory so spectacular is actually seeing the sets that they built, you know, in the Chocolate Factory itself. It just looked awesome. It looked like actual things they put together. The river looked re- real. The flowers looked real. In this, it just looked like all CGI. So that threw me off. And yeah, kind was, of it took away some of the enjoyment. Yeah. So like, obviously computer generated. It was just a big CGI movie. It was a big green screen the entire mm-hmm. time. And like you said, no practical. It takes you out of the movie, you know? They weren't actually putting kids in tubes, you know, in this movie. It was all visual. In the original, remember the kids would go get sucked in there. <laughs> Yeah, see, that didn't have that authenticity to it. Absolutely, yeah, and and during the moments that kind of got scary in that film, it was because it looked real. You know how they put the the, when the girl ate the candy and turned into the big purple, and they were rolling her. It just you know for for it being obviously practical, it just looks so much better when it's not CGI. It just takes you out of it when you saw Hughes Oompa Loompa walking towards the end there, and it was all obviously computerized. It's just like, yeah, they made this movie, you know, 90% on the computer and just had Timothy dancing and singing, uh, you know, around it, which is fine. But, you know, it it, ta- it took something away from it for me. Um, so basically, that's all I've got for this. Nothing to add here. You know, it, it wasn't terrible. We'll say that, but uh, nothing that I'm going to rush out to go see again. Uh, I was listening to the Empire podcast. They really loved it. So I was expecting it to like it a little more than I did. But it was just kind of, of uh, you know, standard mid middle of the road for me. Yeah, I wasn't excited about this movie in the first place. And I left the theater not excited. So, uh, you know, a movie <laughs> we really didn't need. Did we need a prequel of Wonka? No. You know, this movie doesn't have the magic of the original. Doesn't have Gene Wilder. Uh, Timothy Chalamet, that looks nothing like him play this character you know i like him as an actor i actually love him as an actor he did the best he could with it it just too much music too, you know musical sing-alongs and all that stuff it just kind of took me out of the movie and the whole cgi mess that it was you know just the computer effects visual effects and didn't have that magic you know the original film like you said with the sets it takes you out of it but hugh grant was fantastic supporting cast is great a lot of big names show up along the way as you said um but overall just you know, a movie, like I said before, probably shouldn't have been made. I know us older guys didn't like it, but maybe younger kids out there might like this. People that like musicals, maybe they'll enjoy this. But for us, definitely not a winner. So that being said, I'm going to give Wonka, currently playing in theaters, I'm going to give it a three out of five. Hugh Grant's head pieces. What the hell gets? What the goes all down? Sweets. Yep, same score for me. Three out of five. Not bad, but don't go rush out to see it. 
I think you'll probably leave the theater being disappointed. If you're a big fan of the original too, that that's a lot because I love the original film. It's great. You know, there's the horror aspects of it, you know, the, the kind of nefarious uh, portrayal that Gene Wilder does along with the wonderment too. It's a nice mix of that. You never know where he's quite at if he's going insane and Timothy Chalamet just, just plays it straight here. He plays it like he's 100% good guy in this. This is more of a kid's film. It's more of like bring the whole family. Um, so not a terrible film, but uh, yeah, pretty standard. So I'm going to give Wonka a three out of five Rowan Atkinson hair pieces. I want to hear from all you candy enthusiasts out there. What did you like about Wonka? What didn't you like about it? Do you like this movie better than the original? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to stay. Subscribe. Also check out these Oompa Loompas on Facebook, X, and Instagram and our website, cinefellows.com for the latest, greatest TV, movie, news, and reviews. That's right. And if you guys already haven't, please click subscribe. And let us know what you guys think of Wonka. If you go and see it this weekend, maybe you'll enjoy it more than us. Please let us know. Either way, we love hearing from you all. So thank you guys for watching our review of the new movie starring Timothy Chalamet, Wonka. And until the next time, I'm Uncle Henry Chalamet. And I'm Uncle Logan Grant, signing out from across the pond. Until the next movie review. Cheers! Cheers!